Hey. Hold on a sec. All right, that's better. Sorry, this is a little awkward for me. This is my first time trying to do this. I've been trying to do this for a long time and yay yay yay. So this is gonna be a live podcast. It's gonna be posted to YouTube and hopefully other places after this is done. But I guess the point of today is to just try and share as many ideas as I can. And about a lot of interesting subjects. But it's a little awkward. I realize I'm talking to no one and these are ideas I've thought about for a long time and haven't really shared with many people. So it's kind of difficult to imagine there's an audience. But I guess we'll just plow through and hopefully as I go along I'll get more accustomed to how strange this all is. All right. So, hello world. Um, I guess you can call me Sleepy. That's not my real name, but it's almost always true. I uh, spend a lot of time dreaming and unfortunately not enough time doing and I uh, hope with this stream that I can change that a little bit uh, but you know as is common problem with dreamers the problems that I wish to take on and solve and take a crack at are perhaps a few orders of magnitude larger than what I could ever be capable of but you know, every once in a while, people got to take their shot and see what happens. So, yeah, I think I got like a lot of ideas that I want to share with the world that I think could be helpful, like new ways of, new approaches to the problems that we're all facing that I've not seen enough of. Um, I think there's like a lot of easy things that we can do that we're just not doing yet that... Uh, could help us become more competent and help us, you know, sky's the limit. Like ideally, you know, reverse climate change, world peace, all that kind of stuff. But uh, I mean, it seems kind of insurmountable. Like I'm, I think most people are dissatisfied with the state of discourse online and off. Uh, we seem supremely incapable of working together in a lot of ways. But at the same time, there's an enormous amount of amazing stuff happening. Like, it's the amount, uh, the scope and the breadth of the science being done and the expanding of human knowledge and capabilities going on right now, it's astounding. But it seems to be overshadowed by our cumulative mistakes <laughs> that have had come on through the years and I guess the race is on right now can we can we develop the competence to work together and create a future for a planet that can actually you know a future that everyone can understand is possible and could last generations thousands of years even into the future like just a, a, a way that we can live together that everyone can be cool with. And I know we have a lot of deep rooted problems, but I, I think for me, like the, I'm going to get into a lot of things. I have some weird ideas, 
I think about now. I guess my my ultimate goal is to find the ideas that everyone can agree on, no matter what your background is. Like the the things that we can agree to collaborate on. And I think like first and foremost among those is we need to be building tools to help us collaborate better. I mean, I think we kind of suck at collaboration. I think we kind of suck at resolving conflicts, collectively resolving conflicts. We're absolutely terrible at it. It's mostly just, a, I don't know, polarization industrial complex out there. It seems like everybody's making cash, getting people angry at each other. And uh, so I think there's there's not a lot of incentive to, you know, help people get along better. And I guess, I don't know, maybe it's foolish to think that perhaps it's foolish to think that it's possible that we could work together. But you know, you gotta try. And so, yeah, so the, the first project that I have in mind is basically I want to build an online platform uh, for collective conflict resolution for, for sort of different groups that have different opinions on things to, you know, eventually reach an agreement. And of course, that's, that sounds like a huge scope, but I'm going to try to get more specific at the end of this podcast. But for, like before I get into the specifics of that platform that I want to build, I feel like I have to introduce myself a little bit, uh, my philosophy, where I'm coming from, um, how I see the world. I, I do have some controversial opinions about a few topics that might be red flags for some people, but I'm going to try to articulate them as well as, or my positions on these controversial issues as well as I can to hopefully... Um, allow people to feel that there's a space for people who have philosophy similar to mine. Um, so uh, anyways, let's just get into it. I'm going to basically kind of live draft a uh, the writing of, of a book type thing as this podcast goes on. So here I'm going to bring up some uh yeah some notepads for us to work with this is libra office i'm a, a open source type advocate always uh well that's part of the thing it's like how can we work together and uh i'm very inspired by all the ways that we have been able to work together so far i'm a big fan of science and open science. I'm a big fan of the free software, open source software ecosystem. Everyone in it is a hero to me. Um, and there's so much going on in that space. There's so much going on in the software space and in the science space. And I'm inspired by it. And all the people in it like blow me away in terms of like intellect and capabilities. At the same time, I think there's just there's still some ideas that I'd like to get out there, and I think there's certain uh, concepts that can be expressed in a certain way that I'm hoping that people from various backgrounds could agree to that I'm hoping to present today. And yeah, so let's get it. So I've created an outline for this. Um, book type thing uh, many times in the past, uh, but I'm going to start from scratch today. I always start from scratch, um, but this is for real because this is live streamed and so, and that's kind of part of the reason I'm streaming is I want to hold myself accountable to keep on working. I also want to be, make the development of this platform transparent so everyone can see it and yeah, see the philosophy and the ideas behind it. All right, so yeah, no pressure or anything. So yeah, here, here's a challenge for you people out there in the world. Um, go online. 
create an account on this streaming platform and or make your own i don't know just start streaming and give yourself a challenge where you have to start talking and you can't finish talking until you solve all the world's problems that's that's a challenge that's the challenge I, i'm putting myself up to today so it is it, it should be at least hilarious memes if i don't change any minds or hearts or whatever okay so first okay outline first i want to talk about this uh naive see i, I I'm, I'm bad at everything i can't spell i um can barely code I'm just a dreamer that's that's it but I'm going to try so basically this is my my naive meta philosophy and okay after I talk about that I want to talk about I guess I'll so yeah Okay, I guess like, so I want to talk for a bit about my naive philosophy and kind of which everything else gets a little bit built from. Uh, I, I kind of, like, I, I, this is all just like, I'm not really a, uh, I never really studied morals or ethics or moral philosophy or anything like that. I just, I, I've, I've, you know, I watch lectures on YouTube because I'm always interested, but can never remember a video that I seen six months ago, let alone two weeks ago. So, but I think over time, like a few ideas propped in here and there. But so, anyways, my basic philosophy is kind of I've had this for a long time. It, I just, I guess for me, there's like two primary virtues that keep each other in check, uh, and that's love and doubt. Yeah, watch me misspell every single word in real time. This will be great internet content, but I don't care. Here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to get more into this, but basically, I, uh, you know, I think love is our capacity to want to take care of things the way they are and doubt is our ability to question why things are the way they are and always wonder why they can't be better and i think love and doubt are kind of they're kind of like my yin and yang like love keeps doubt in check because um with too much doubt you get stuck and your love can like push through uh, a doubtful mindset but at the same time doubt can keep love in check from becoming too smothering and um hopefully um stopping you from uh, doing bad with good intentions but maybe i'll we'll talk a bit more about that later but um after i talk about the meta philosophy i want to talk about um uh, organizing the uh, economic i'll just call it economic ecolo ecological economics and like i am not an i i'm I'm no good. I'm not a, a expert on economics or the ecology. I, I know very little about both, but I think it's pretty clear. And I think it's uh, an argument can be made that almost every human on the on the planet can agree with that our economics would be better if it was mapped directly onto our ecological realities, which it's not right now. So I'll just let's say ecological economics so like in 
and ecological economics, like a, um, basically the the value of currency and exchange, and needs to be better measured. And and many people have been advocating for this for years. Um, I, I I I mean I thought David Suzuki lecture fifteen years ago calling for you know or the value of exchanges to be based on ecological realities. And I'm sure he wasn't the first. Um, uh, so you can get to more of that later. But the, then the next uh, thing on the outline is, uh, I guess what I like to call uh, democratic protocracy. <laughs> Proto. And what is a democratic protocracy? Well, this has to do with imagining democracy as a function, as a cons uh, I don't know if a function, as a result, as a decol from uh, from. Um, basically our democracy emergent from information infrastructure. So, basic idea here is I like to spend a lot of time just imagining like how what what institutions would be more essentially democratic like the the information space right now is dominated by basically corporate monopolies that feel like they can do whatever they want with everyone's private information and everyone's information is for sale. And uh, yeah, we, we basically put a few monopolies in an enormous amount of power just by letting them, we, out of convenience, because they make cool tools that help us you know, get along with each other and in some ways or connect with each other. Uh, but at the, the, the price we pay for that is uh, we're at their mercy in a lot of ways. Uh, we don't have a lot of freedom in, in choosing um, but we, we still have, I mean, realistically we have an enormous amount of choice, but the systems are designed such that they can be gamed and that they can be gamed against us. And the rules that are behind these systems are obscured and proprietary and no one's allowed to know how they fundamentally work. And there are um, movements to address the issues. Uh, like People like, uh, I don't know, um, Tristan Harris, for example, is uh, advocating uh, corporate responsibility on this front and better transparency. And I don't want to talk too much about it. You should go check him out. He seems really brilliant guys with a lot of ideas about that. Um, uh, I spend more time thinking about, like, I, I think I, I'm not, I'm not even really, I haven't looked into too much about the work that they're doing, but the, the, I'm not so interested in, in reforming Facebook or Amazon or any of these large companies as I am in, interested in creating new kinds of institutions that are distinct from the old capitalistic models and uh, but yet can still function on their own and 
So there's there's a lot to get into there, and it's going to take a while to cover it, but that's kind of the basic idea. Uh, well, when we get to this point, and I think before actually I get to these points, I have to talk about my, about, yeah, or about my, where's that, how does this work? Hold on. Okay, I need to talk about um, me, about me a, a little bit, and my controversial ideas about certain things. Just so I can get them out of the way. And I have, I think, these are the... Fortunately, the ideas that I'm afraid can get me into trouble, and they are about ay ay ay. One has to do with shame. The other has to do with intellectual property, and the, despite that, I have these controversial views on shame and intellectual property, I don't think that they should affect uh, how you might feel about the institutions that I would like to build. Uh, because basically, my controversial opinion about shame is, is, is that su it sucks. Shame sucks. And uh, it, it, it doesn't work. Um, and it's the first thing that, you know, when people are confronted with people they disagree with or people that are fundamentally different than them in a lot of ways, or someone with ideas that shock them or hurt them, it's... Uh, to resort to shame, and I think it's plain to see that um, there's a lot of shaming going on in the world today. And and why this is a controversial idea is it's controversial to say that it's very controversial to say that shame is a bad strategy or that shame is not a good thing because, um, well, here's the thing, like. I would never shame a person for shaming someone else. Like, I, 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 I just, I, for, uh, first of all, I, I would never shame anyone for anything. I think if someone feels the need to shame someone, then, I mean, and then, I, then I accept that need. I respect that need, and 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 that's absolutely valid. And if they find, feel they have no recourse, but then absolutely they should be totally free to express that. But the, th the only time that you, you where I argue you, sh you shouldn't shame others is, 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 is when there's a better alternative and, and a better alternative that you understand and a better alternative that you know will be more effective at solving whatever problem that you're hoping the shame mean would solve. And, and like what I hope to be able to argue with by introducing these other strategies is that as far as I can tell, there's almost always a more productive alternative. And I think that's an extraordinary claim, and I'm not expecting anyone to believe that. But I just ask that that it's cool that 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 I believe that and that I'm gonna uh try to work around that. Yeah, and then it's like I think it's important that I say like like sh shame is being used as a tool from people who that are you know historically oppressed to call out their oppression, and that's super important. And I would not in any way want to stop that. But what I do want to do is I want to build a world in which that oppression doesn't exist anymore, and I think the path to that world. can be traveled without using shame at all.
And I hope to be able to convince you of that eventually. But, you know, in the meantime, continue <laughs> as you are. Uh, yeah. Now, on intellectual property, basically I think intellectual property sucks <laughs> and that it's like a bad strategy for uh, the promotion of scientific progress in the arts. Uh, I think copyright is a form of thought control. And I think that most everything that we use copyrights for could be better replaced with attribution rights and royalty rights. And similarly, I think patents are pretty awful and that um, they, or will they enable some companies to perhaps get the funding they, they need? And I, I'm not fully persuaded that they're necessary, and I'm not an expert on this. I'm not an intellectual property lawyer. I'm not an economist. I'm not anything. This is just a gut feeling. This is just where I'm coming from. And despite the fact that I have this completely naive view of intellectual property, I hope it doesn't um, dissuade you from considering some of the alternatives that I would like to propose. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of yeah, as I mentioned earlier, the open source movement and everything around it, and also the, the open science movement and the open art movement, which you can see like with a Creative Commons licenses and that whole ecosystem. Um, And, yeah, I look forward to a world where yeah i i th basically I think the uh we can do better than what we have now. Artists can get a better deal than they have now, and they can do it by basically building institutions that replace what the record labels and big movie companies basically i, I, I want to op automate i want institutions not just institutions but i, I call them protocols that's why a democratic protocracy um basically we can build an information infrastructure that's composed of various institutions that can replace the functions basically automate the functions in a lot of way of what is currently the uh, wheelhouse of monopolistic corporations, um, and and I, I guess like I haven't used the words like socialist or capitalist or anything like that, and I I don't really like those words. I I don't think that many people really know what they mean. I don't think I know what they mean because they can mean so many different things in so many different contexts. I think what fundamentally matters is just how we choose to organize it, organize ourselves, what our infrastructure looks like, what it's composed of. And I'd like to see infrastructure that was, okay, so let's get back to this. Now I've gotten my controversial ideas a little bit talked about. I'm gonna go back to the, yeah, protocracy angle. So, a democratic protocracy is a society in which, yeah, okay, well, here we go. It's n another stuff for the outline, basically. Um, so, sorry, this is so scatterbrained. I'm trying to like, f funnel a million ideas uh, and occasionally it's I see myself in the third person and I get really embarrassed but I'm going to try and keep pushing until I get all this out there because I've been holding it in too long and I want to start streaming I want to start working I want to start developing and I need to just like get the shit out of the way okay so after all that ramble hopefully this will be edited for the I'm going to edit this later and make a more concise version that hopefully gets rid of a lot of these awkward pauses and asides. Um, hopefully creates a more coherent narrative than I'm able to deliver at the moment. And 
perhaps like in the future I'll refine this and give a better talk. And okay, so so how how would one begin to like re basically I want if, yeah ask a question how how could we questions let's like given modern technology how do we best organize democracy basically i think our democratic institutions and our uh, a lot of our economic institutions and all of our businesses and our, they're they're all based on like hundreds of years old ideas and you know a lot of them they, they served us reasonably um this is debatable i mean they've allowed technology technology to progress and that's something gotten us to where we are today but uh Given current technology, how could we make society more democratic? How could we make our institutions more democratic? How could we make, how could we basically such that we maximize? So, All right, where is So we want to maximize personal freedoms. So I'm not a liber I, I'm not a libertarian, but I'm sympathetic with libertarians. So I will say personal freedoms and autonomy. Um Collective ecological competence. Man, everyone's going to see how bad a speller I am. It's awesome. I, in my f in fairness, I haven't really tried to write anything in more than a decade. So I was like, all right, back in school, but that's a long time ago now, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, my writing ability is, uh, stagnated, but you know, we all got to start again sometimes. So yeah, we got to, so I want to collective ecological incompetence. So, uh, I want to, yeah. Um, also I'm, I'm a believer in like local community. I think um, per maximizing personal autonomy is all, it goes hand in hand with um, um, community freedom and autonomy. And this, I'm mean, here. I mean, like geographically local. So like local communities would be, it'd be ideally if like every local, imagine if every community in the world could uh, feed itself, for example, you know, an impossible task given current technology. But um, I think like the more that we maximize a local community's ability to take care of itself, uh, I'm hopeful that will increase world peace, but of course, like there's other arguments to be made that like world trade contributes to world peace because we're dependent on each other. And here I am arguing that if we're more autonomous, um, but I think like in terms of managing the ecology, like every local community needs to be, if to an, an, an ecologically competent community would be one that was ecologically neutral and was able to feed itself, uh, with minimal impacts. Now, when I say I want to maximize local autonomy, I, I think it's probably impossible to have a local community that is completely self-sustained and absolutely is going to need to be trade. But I think I d 
ideally he uh trade would be mm, or basically the, the we want to minimize the movement of uh ecological resources as much as possible uh and the but yeah so uh, uh obviously i'm it's i i'm you know have a lot of more thinking to do on all these ideas, but I'm just trying to sort of paint a big picture. Hopefully, eventually, I can get there. Um, but, 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 yeah, ideally, like a, a community would be more freedom, more free in, in the choices it makes if it was less dependent on uh, having to answer to. Th the needs of others so if others could manage their own needs and then you can manage your needs and everyone can manage their own needs and uh, I think that it, yeah it gives people the freedom of what to do beyond meeting their needs um, yeah I'm not articulating this well I'm going to come back to this I have another way I want to attack this that I'm just not ready to talk about yet. Uh, anyway, so, so yeah, so I articulated that poorly, but I'm going to move on. Uh, so personal freedoms, autonomy, local commu community freedom, autonomy, collective ecological competence. We want to maximize um, world peace. So let's just, so maybe some would argue that maximizing local autonomies would be bad for world peace, but I think we can do it in such a way that it helps. Uh, we can create world peace in other ways. Um, so now my cat's distracting me. <laughs> All right. Sorry. So yeah, how can we best organize democracy such that we maximize Personal freedoms, local community. All right. Anyway, moving on. Um, so, basically, my idea is not my idea, just an idea. Just uh, the, the, the the way. Okay. Here's 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 an argument for our, how we should work together. Uh, something a moonshot. Here's here's a moonshot. Something that humans i think should agree that we should work together to build there's there's several of these but i think this one is is pretty clear i think an argument can be made it doesn't matter whether you're a socialist or a capitalist or or whatever political party from whatever country you're from it, it shouldn't matter i i think that you can make a persuasive argument that almost anyone should agree with i hope that what would be a really really useful tool if we had it and I, I'm going to start with like an impossible futuristic tool, but and work backwards from there. But uh, so what would be great is if we had a global ecological holistic global. And I'm sorry if the word holistic offends people. I I'm just, I don't know. I know it has a lot of baggage, but. Uh, Yeah, hold on. Okay. Holistic ecological model. And now, when I say this, like, imagine fully. Imagine. Uh, dream. I guess just call this a dream. Because it doesn't exist. But if it did exist, it would be amazing. And that is uh, a full simulation 
of every molecule on the planet. Sorry, uh, that's probably not the best word. Full simulation of the global ecosystem down to the molecule. And a full simulation of the economy. Now, making a simulation of the economy is, of course, complicated when we, I'm, I'm a privacy advocate. And of course, if you're going to be simulating the economy, you're like, how can you do that without, you know, uh, violating the privacy of everyone in the economy? So that's a challenge. But I think it's uh, a solvable problem. I, I think we can, like, basically, uh, yeah, and you, but I'll, more on that later. I keep getting sidetracked, but just to say if we had like oh, like our computers imagine our computing resources were so fantastic and our satellites were so amazing and our science had developed to the point that we could keep track of everything perfectly we could we knew exactly how much carbon was in the atmosphere and exactly how much each tree was sucking out of it and you know all the bacteria and fungus and Here's my cat. This is Smokey. Say hi to the world, Smokey. Um, but it, it, like, say there was this. Say we had this full simulation. Not only, but there was this full simulation. But everyone in the world had access to it, and everyone could look at it, and everyone could work on it, and everyone can improve it. Basically, like a Wikipedia, except one that's functioned. Once that models the planet, one that you could like hit press play, and then you could change something here, you could change something there. Well, what if we did this, and then we hit play, and we could see what would happen? And what if we did that, and we could change it, and we could see what would happen? Of course, we don't have this, and you could argue that all of science, in in a way, is uh, attempting to work towards this and we're kind of advancing towards this uh, uh, seemingly at an exponential pace in some areas with the pace of data science and uh, the increasing processing speeds that we've been enjoying all this time. Uh, it's, um, it, but I like so as as so this, this this thing doesn't exist, but you know, the, a, a perfect model. I think we can like though though a perfect model is far away. We still aim to do our best with the best models that we have. So, and that's just basically a general idea. So, so imagining, let's imagine imagine Um, that we mobilize, that we organize society such that it's a clear goal that we're all working towards to build the best model for everyone. And, okay, a lot of this is happening. Like, go to, like, the website for almost any community or any, any city that has more than 100,000 people in the developed world and you're likely to find a wealth of resources on, um, well, I mean, you could just go to the, the Wikipedia page and you can get a great deal of information, but there's even more. There's, you go to the, usually the municipal websites and you can get maps and of 
all sorts of things like digital elevation maps and water use maps, um, vegetation maps, and and this is all being combined, of course, with like enormous like lower resolution maps from satellites being collected by NASA and the various other sp space organizations. So the, the, the amount of data out there is is just enormous, and it's all coming together, and it is being modeled and is being collected, and the open science movement is tying together, but it's a bit scattered. And this is why I brought up my controversies on intellectual property earlier. I think intellectual property laws are holding us back from from developing this model as fast as we could with with different intellectual property laws. Let's let, let's say with better intellectual property less um okay so yes yeah, so I, I i think i think it's uncontroversial to say like uh, if if you could guarantee people's privacy in an, ec an economic model it would be useful for people to be able to have this. so now uh, when I get back to like, how do I want to build institutions and what's a democratic bureaucracy? I, when I want to build, I want to build institutions that plug into this global model, that plug into this holistic ecological economic model that uh, down to, so, uh, what, so, Um, so like imagine that all your local institutions, hmm, how can I put this? This is, this is, it's challenging, I'm racking my brain, how I want to articulate this. Hmm. So I guess one way to put it is like, I like to imagine a business instead of being like uh fully just like profit driven enterprise that um i like the idea of of building not just institu institutions that are that have a complete open spec like imagine like a library or a hospital or even a coffee shop, like a business. So like a, a post public institutions and private institutions, I think should have complete uh, blueprints and code such that like, say you wanted to open a coffee shop uh, or you wanted to open, or a community wanted to open a library, they could go and they could basically, I mean, not, not that it's rocket science to do these kinds of things, but I think we, sh we, we it would be cool if there was tools available and models available that, basically turnkey like that were completely free and completely open to anyone for anyone to access such that so you you, you want to open a coffee shop then bam like all, like you can download business plans already but it'd be nice if there was like a fully standard business plan that you just plug and play turnkey this is this is, these are the things you need to buy this is the stuff you got to do and and then once you're in place once you have your so, so basically, all the operational details of whatever business or whatever company you want to open—that's, you know, that's uh, say a standard kind of a business that's been around for a while. That's perhaps not a brand new institution, but a, but an older, one, but a classic style. Uh, make make it as easy, easy as possible, such that uh, it could just be plugged into the surrounding uh economy and the surrounding so uh, like okay for, for example say like a community was completely modeled modeled and every, every business in the community had an open business model and an open spreadsheet such that all like the income and all of the resource usage were completely transparent and uh shared online uh, such that like if anyone was to open a new business in the community before they open the new business they could see they could map the uh, the full 
ecological impact of what of that business before they open it and i think it would also make it easier for people to run businesses and easier for people to start businesses and easier for people to move from one business to another um But I think th the shape of these institutions wouldn't look exactly like the institutions we have now. Uh, like an open source coffee shop would run a little differently than a corporate franchise coffee shop. Um, but I'd like to believe that we can do it. And I'd like to, uh, I don't know, like, Earlier I said I, I was not a libertarian, but I'm a libertarian sympathizer. I'm also, I'm not a socialist, but I'm definitely a socialist sympathizer in terms of like, it's, as I said, I don't know what those words mean, but if anyone wants to, if anyone who calls themselves a libertarian, I respect them and I try to, you know, hear their arguments and concerns and want to meet them the same way when a socialist has arguments and concerns, I I'm sympathetic to them and I want to meet them. And uh, I guess one of the ways I'm, I'm dis dissatisfied with s socialism is, is, is it's, 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 it's methods for organizing labor are as ancient as, I think are, 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 they're just old and not really thought through. They, they don't, I think we can do better. I I, th I think I think we can we can do better than unions and and even better than the worker co-ops that are out there at the moment. I know I'm still in, I love unions and and worker co-ops and I think I vastly prefer them to uh, corporate monopolies. But I I think we can do better. What, what I'd like to see is basically better, more leaderless institutions. Where people can flow in and out without, where people can join and leave the institution while the institution itself remains stable and healthy. So, hold on a second. Yeah. So these are all pies in the sky dreams, but. Um, I think it might make more sense if I get a little bit more specific of 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 some ideas for ideas for yeah, information for a more democratic Hold on a second, I'll be right back. I need a drink of water.
muted. There we go. Hi, back. So, yeah. I was saying that I feel like this is not going nearly as well as I hoped, and I'm finding it much harder to articulate myself than I thought I would. But I'm just going to keep plowing through regardless and just keep on talking until I run out of things to say or I get too tired and pass out or whatever happens first. So here goes. Some ideas for a more democratic infrastructure. Try to, yeah, here's, or, or perhaps ways, so I'm going to like, basically let's hear some pos, uh, or institutions, uh, ideas for more democratic institutions so like before i get into this I, I think i should acknowledge some of the work that's being going on in this space that's really amazing and you should check out so yeah maybe we should talk about those ideas first like yeah inspiring ideas inspiring uh work and ideas um okay, so i think one i'll mention right off the bat is Freedom Box. Now, I'd, I'd, I think in a future stream, I'd really like to get a uh, Freedom Box and demo it. And I'd like to get the source, the code that I'm uh, creating. I'd love to get it to work on a Freedom Box um, as a tool that people use. So basically, the idea of the Freedom Box, I, I, I learned about it through Eben Moglen, who's one of my intellectual heroes. Um, he gives great motivational lectures if you're a open source geek uh highly recommend checking it out um but yeah his talks on the freedom box to really learn more about it um but the uh the idea is 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 imagine if you had a box in your house and there's actually one that went on sale just like a week ago i think for a hundred bucks you buy it you plug it in and you and it's basically like your personal data repository like you keep your personal data there so you ideally the the idea is like you don't put your data on facebook you don't put your data on twitter you know you don't put it like uh you, you put it on your freedom box and and this box will protect your your privacy and basically give you ownership of your data and the only pe way that other people can see your data is if you allow them to see it so uh, rather than get to the mechanics of it, I'll just, you know, that's, that's the fundamental idea. Like uh, uh, this is like basically uh, home server that allows you to I don't know how to spell that. Uh, he call it yeah. People don't like the word the word users allows people to to basically control Individuals get to choose what information they want to share and who they want to share it with. And like the goal, of course, is to make this as easy as possible so everyone can use it. And yeah, so, but of course it's always gonna be hard for some people and uh so like perhaps like you could argue that like the freedom box isn't enough and and, and and then what about the software like how do, how does that work it so so the other other important idea that's inspiring out there that's out there right now is uh uh, maybe I'm starting too late into this. I, I I should probably go chronological at some point. I'm gonna I'm gonna revise this in the future. I, I gotta organize this into an actual like academic talk or an academic 
book at some point, but um, so like, I, let's go back in time. The Freedom Box is a very recent phenomenon, uh, trying to uh, solve a very recent problem. But like, like I think like going back, I mean, I mean, uh, it, well, it just goes back so far. Like, the, uh, I can't start talking about Plato and Aristotle. So, but uh, let me just start talking still about. Uh, uh, it's like, oh, yeah, this is, yeah, this is just throw free software in the whole like yeah I don't want to get to the free software open source politics because you know there's there's different things but basically I, I appreciate anyone who wants to share their work with the world so the free software and the open source software communities also the um the internet engineering task force um uh the internet engineering these are like the the group of people i think some of them were like with darpa and and from various I'm not. I I might even have that wrong. I used to know this story, but it's been so long since I've uh, read up on it or listened to lectures about it. But uh, basically, this is like the group of people that it came up with the original internet protocols. That did, did, and it's kind of where I, I drew the inspiration for the word protocracy. Um, the, yeah, they had some pretty altruistic and egalitarian notions when they were putting together the first internet and uh it's kind of important i i recommend like checking them out uh reading reading about that history because it's really interesting and uh there's one quote that i just wanted to share i'm going to try to get that quote uh Yeah, this is this. They have this ethos, this founding belief that was. Um, there's a quote from David Clark, one of the founders, that I've I've always inspired me. We reject kings, presidents, and voting. We believe in rough cons consensus and running code. Like. Like I kind of want to apply that ethos to democracy as a whole. I, I don't know. I, I guess like uh, other people have been mocked for trying to go down this path in the past, but I think that the, the kind of things they were doing, the kind of ways that they were thinking when they were building the original ether internet, could be applied to society more broadly, and. We can imagine all our institutions as protocols for managing resources and working together. And in a protoocracy, I guess, like, yeah, I have to, I'll get to that later. I gotta, we have to talk more about proto protoocracy after, but first I wanna talk more about institutions. But, I'm just going to put a note down here so I remember to talk about it later. Uh, uh, what is a protocracy? I guess, and I think I should specify democratic protocracy because sometimes I can imagine maybe a protocracy that wasn't democratic, and that's a very scary thing to think about. Um, all right. So. Yeah, so I'm st still sticking with inspiring ideas. So, so yeah, these are the guys that, the, and, and like the original protocols, they were they were openly published, and they use this format called a request for comment. So when you're defining a protocol for like like in a say, um, say the internet protocol itself, IP or 
uh, TCP transport control protocol and other, other protocols. There's so many, but uh, they, they created these things called request for comments, RFC. And so the idea is in, and then the request for comment, the, uh, they, they make a step-by-step -step definition of, of, of basically how a machine that's on the internet, that's trying to interoperate with another machine, like, uh, what procedures it would have to follow to enable that communication. And, and this is like independent of the actual implementation. So the idea is like anyone can come on and like implement the protocol, but, and so long as it follows the protocol, it can participate in the network regardless of the implementation style or whatever. And, Yeah. So, yeah, I, I like to basically imagine imagine if we could have if, if imagine an institution as proto protocols. Like, imagine if we had basically library protocols, and we kind of do already. Like, and I'm not a librarian, and librarians would know so much more about this. And I hope I don't say anything that pisses the librarian off, because they're the coolest people. Uh, they're up there. Um, so. And, and and of course, like I don't want to underestimate the complexity of running an institution, but I think um, of or, or, or any any institution, but yeah. But I like the idea of of basically just like a, a computer simulation of an institution with data that is available to the public, and it can be plugged in with other simulations of other institutions that could be that could form even better giant simulations of all these institutions working together. Uh, and I like the idea of, say, if somebody wants to change an institution or create a new institution, you know, you, you create, create a request for comment or you define a protocol or you define what that change would be and then you could even potentially run it in the simulation first. And, uh, and if the improvement works, then maybe we'll try it out. And so, yeah, <laughs> I, don't know, I'm, I guess I really want to talk about what a democratic protocracy is now. But okay, anyway, I'll get back to that. But yeah, so I just want to say I'm inspired by the whole free software, open source communities, the Internet Engineering Task Force, and more recently, the Freedom Box is is a brilliant and idea. And another important thing that's recently I want I have to I think I have to talk about before I get to my stuff is uh, federated services. And like, and also peer-to-peer -peer applications, which have been around a while longer. Uh, so, now I think now, like, like, say, if everyone in the world was like a, an engineer capable of hacking their own freedom box, for example and creating their own backup freedom boxes and, and all these sorts of things. And everyone was perfectly autonomous and like uh, a peer to peer applications would be enough. Freedom box would be enough. But because I don't think that's too much to expect of if even engineers to be able to fully understand all the code that's in a freedom box. Um, it's basically, um, and unless we augment ourselves some way in the future, but I don't want to even go there. Uh, Federated services are kind of like a good, like middle, uh, are, are a compromise institution. They're basically like, so it's like, basically like a, a libertarian a utopia. Everyone would completely just uh, uh, digital, completely one hundred percent look after their own digital footprint and not need anyone else to help them with it. But because that's a too tall a task, uh, federated services are a, a way of are a, of organizing labor, basically, and organizing uh, like basically creating a web service that uh, can help do the, some of the more complicated things for people who aren't able to do them themselves, and which is basically everybody. Um, so cool federated services that are out there now. Uh, there, there's so many other like there's um, um, Mastodon, which is kind of like a, a federated Twitter, 
and there's peer tube which is a federated youtube and uh, there's there, there's many many others and i'm i want to actually uh, make accounts on all these guys and post all th my info there as well in the future because i really want to support those uh federal services like so yeah mastodon all those um, make sure i get that spelling right or did i get that wrong I think that's it. Uh, and kind of federated YouTube. Now, the idea here is, yeah, so it, it'd be nice to be less dependent on uh, basically large corporate monopolies. Of course, like uh, content creators on these platforms have had issues in the recent past in terms of unpredictable um, incomes and very little control and whole mess of it's yeah so and, and perhaps these federated services might be a way of uh giving in the future giving like already they exist and you can try them and uh, and, and I'm, I'm, to, to be honest i'm not fully aware of how advanced the communities on these platforms are uh but i know there are a number of people using them and uh i'm definitely following them with interest so and as far as i know the, these kind of federated services is, is basically it's like anyone who feels themselves capable can set up their own server and then on your server you can like host uh the amount of content that you want to host yeah um or, or yeah but I don't want to talk too much about it because basically I, I know little about it, but I just want to say that it's like an inspiring idea for me and and I want to take this concept into... So when I, when I talk about ideas for democratic institutions, I'm, I'm thinking along the lines of local federated, federated services that are locally based. So, um, yeah, ideas for democratic institutions. Um, so, uh, here, here, one idea I, I think is we need local data and, okay, so before I say this, uh, like I don't have the, we're talking about Hold on a second. I'll be right back.
Yeah, sorry, I spilled some coffee. All right, so, so yeah, local data banks, basically. And so the, the idea here is basically, I, I'd like to see local data centers for hosting local data and, and, and okay, and library. Whoa, what is going on? Keyboard's malfunctioning. Maybe I got some coffee in it. Um, so local library data banks for public data and media. So yeah, so I, I like I like the idea of basically, um, if you're if you're trusting a federated service to manage your data, like important data, say like your medical data. So imagine you have a Freedom Box at home that has your medical data on it, and when your doc doctor or any doctor wants to access your data, um, you give them a key. Basically, um, I guess I should should be aware that there is a. Oh, hold on! Actually, I got to sure that yeah make sure that i'm saving this document i'm working on it doesn't disappear by accident all right so Yeah, I was talking about local data banks. So the idea is like you have your Freedom Box at home, which has your medical data on it. And say you want to share it with a new doctor, uh, you give them a public key. And I guess you should, you might not be aware that, of the mechanics of public key cryptography. Uh, but like uh, th there's, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a useful tool that exists that people should know about. And as long as encryption holds up, and I think there's even when, hopefully by the time quantum encryption gets rid of our contemporary encryption techniques, there'll be better encryption techniques to take its place and allow the system to hold. But right now, like on the internet, we have this thing called public key encryption. And what it allows us to do is it, it, we can encrypt our data and then give people keys to access it and such that when they access it, we know it's them that's accessing it and um and it's also such that like uh when they access it they know it came from us so and 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 the and and my idea for like a local information for for an information a democratic information infrastructure you have your data at home on your freedom box. You visit a new doctor, you give him a key for your data and he accesses it and, or she, or sorry, whoever, should, I'm trying not to use pronouns. It's difficult, I'm sorry. Um, so, <clears throat> so your doctor can access it or, or, and, and share it with whatever other doctor that they need to to work on whatever medical problem you have and then when they want to add more information that information goes into your uh your databank and when anyone accesses your data you have a record of it and no one is accessing your data without your permission and uh, what i hope a local data bank would do would just be like a local place where your data can be backed up outside of your freedom box that you could go and you could visit and i think like i don't want to go i have a lot of ideas of how to like technically build a, a a data bank but i that's not the point of today's talk i just want to just throw the idea out there but um but uh i like i like the idea of like so so if you have an issue you, you, there's someone that you could go to to talk to about it if something goes wrong with your freedom box or something's going wrong with weird about your data 
then there should these data banks should have uh, solutions in place for restoring backups and detecting intrusions and stuff like this and this should, should be like basically a professional kind of thing and i don't think it should be a monopoly uh it doesn't need to be a monopoly it just needs to be a, a collective of, of 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 experienced people <laughs> yeah um that that handle these kinds of issues um and as for actually having local data centers that's like tricky to work out the ecological impact of a local data center versus the but i think for like a lot of this like especially like important information that you don't you're not talking about a heck of a lot of data you're talking about like text uh, like like important text uh that that should absolutely there's no reason that that can't be stored locally and it, it could also you know be backed up globally just in case there's like a local catastrophe like a flood or something that the data local data center gets destroyed or something uh it's always important to have many backups of course but anyway so so i think yeah local data banks is an institution that i'd like to see created and i think also public libraries uh and librarians would be great it would be great if they had their own local data center of and if uh, you know it doesn't necessarily have to be a local data center like even even if you've always on aws or something like that that's fine like our amazon web services so, like for, for now i in long term i think especially as, as as the ecological footprint of computers themselves gets improves and which i'm uh, i'm hoping it will um then uh local data centers become more viable and but yeah, I think it's important for their local libraries to have, it would be nice if they had an archive of all of the local communities, both like public artistic output and also it's uh, information about it. it's, 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 it's ecological resources and yeah. Uh, and that, that's just specifically for the data, of course, and um and then there needs to be some kind of i don't know what to call this but some kind of local yeah my d key is in an unfortunate state local that's going to be difficult for starcraft so yeah local modeling institution and the, what the local model institution basically would have to basically have data and also another like data center that actually has instead of having data it has the actual functions or running models of of basically all the uh the, yeah and I don't know how to break this down. Like, there's so many different ways to break this down. This, these are just rough ideas. Just rough, rough ideas. So, uh, so local modeling institution for uh, local logical model. local uh, economic models, including including business. And of course, uh, as the idea, the idea here is that every community develops its own local modeling and its own local data. Eventually, these models can be plugged together, and we can do global scale simulations and type of thing okay so and like i don't know if like we probably want different institutions for but the 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 idea is that like we, we you know like the 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 the, the, the goals and oh yeah I sh inspiring ideas i didn't get to open science yeah open science come on come on get with the program all right So, and there's so many cool things happening in this this space, like, um, whoops, like uh, public journals are 
like unfortunately a lot of science is still behind a paywall but uh thankfully a lot of it is moving into the open space so there's open journals there's uh I don't know some others uh, one thing i heard about recently um like like an in in there's yeah here Here's uh, protocols.io. Uh, I just discovered this recently and obviously sympathetic to it because I don't know. But uh, protocols.io is a website where that scientists are using to share their methods so, so that they are uh, experiments can be more easily replicated. Uh, Like, like historically, science was uh, shared and communicated between scientists through journals, journal articles, which basically described the experiments as best they could and tried to illustrate the key ideas. But um, replicating an experiment simply based on an article can be very challenging. So there's been a, a great movement l lately to for scientists to publish publish their methods that in the machines they're using the Kettler calibrations for their machines the code that they're running and um uh and that's another thing there's and then there uh yeah uh, um, i don't know where would i describe that or what institutions but there, there's a movement i think there's journals out there now that actually have like source code embedded into their articles such that you can like when you're reading the article you can actually run the code on the data that it's talking about and uh unfortunately i can't think of where that is right now but uh, uh basically f um sharing source code and integrating source code models and data into scientific publication. And so, yeah, these are all things that happen in the open science space. Like one, one thing like that's popular, I should like mentioned, like I'm here thinking about like, um, like yeah, I I like them things like basically Jupyter notebooks, and a Jupyter notebook is yeah is it, kind kind of demo like if you just just Google Jupyter notebooks and examples, and you'll see so much cool stuff, uh, from all branches of science of people just, um both telling a story and sharing their data and their code all at the same time and it's beautiful and you should check it out. All right. Yeah, so. So am I ready to talk about what it democratic protocracy is yet so yeah i guess like the idea for like a dem democratic protocracy is basically imagine if like you could you fully you, you had a full simulation of every institution every business in your community and that would allow you to make better decisions going forward uh, like um of course I, I guess like the challenge of course is is privacy so maybe i should uh talk a bit about um like i like i guess like just basically the idea like you don't you don't really have to give any names when you model an institution you don't really have to 
um, you just kind of have to, it would be, you just, if you just have to, like, an institution roles and, yeah, and then, like, and I guess, it, and then it's debatable, like, how much you want to share from there, like, you, you sh I, 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 I'm on the side where, like, the more information, the better, so it's, like, if you shared, like, how much salary do the people that work there have, and how much, definitely how much I think we should share, like, what, what, like, the input, output of, the ecological impact is that's like the main thing but I, it also it's a, it, in terms of like organizing local labor it's it'd be very useful to show how like basically how much uh employees there are compensated but here here, here there's yeah so, so many things um that i feel like i have to say before i want to say what i want to say and I keep getting trapped or stuck. <laughs> um, so I guess, yeah. I, so here's these are the inspiring ideas, but and and here's I want to share some other ideas that are kind of um, related. <laughs> basically so before I get to a proto to my it's like basically how do we say okay I guess I, I go back to the title I, I the title of the whole thing is the world and how to solve it how, how do we how do we solve the world's problems <laughs> um I think like well, some things are obvious, like, like some questions. How do? How can we? Uh, oh, is this not updating? Okay. Yeah. How can we solve the world's problems? How can we? Maximize. potential of every individual I mean, that's a good question in of itself but like how how can we how can we okay I think I think the most powerful untapped resource in the world is humanity's collective brain power and basically how 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 can how can how can like any every human that wants to apply themselves be able to most efficiently apply themselves like how can, how yeah how, how 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 can we help everyone to become as strong and independent as they want to be and as capable as and and at the, at the same time maximizing their capability to how can we maximize everyone's ability to comprehend their the reality uh, 
like like our education and the media is are, are all designed to help you know people become productive members of society and you know they do a reasonably pretty good job but i i guess i think there's Wait, and I'm not an expert on education by any means, and I am not a psychologist, and I'm not a sociologist. Uh, so this is going to sound pretty naive as usual, and I hope I don't piss off any sociologists and psychologists and educators. But... or journalists for that matter. Basically, how can we maximize, use the wrong word, the signal to noise ratio of everyone receives about their world, their environment. The thing is, for all of the amazing journalism that's going on today, and there's a lot of it, and for all of the amazing educators out there, and for all of the, yeah, just, amazing people in media in general and um the signal to noise ratio is pretty bad i think most people can agree uh there's just a heck of a lot of noise and it makes it difficult to know what's true and what's not true especially about topics that you're not trying to master yourself uh or spend a lot of time studying yourself. And even for the issues we spend a lot of time studying ourselves, there's still so much noise out there. Um, so, yeah, how can we um, Yeah, I think I'm starting to get tired. But take a sip of coffee. Deep breath. I think of what I'm trying to say. So anyways, yeah, how can we, basically, how can we do all this? How can we maximize the potential of every individual to participate in their economy, to understand how their economy works, to understand how their ecology works? Um, well, I think, like, uh, like, the above modeling that I was talking about, I think would, of course, totally aid in any kind of education and any kind of uh, journalism, uh, because these tools would be as powerful for educators as they would be for anyone else and so that's definitely part of it but uh yeah but the idea is like how can like like we have we have i don't know over seven billion people on the planet we need to feed them and we need to make sure they're healthy 
and they're safe and we need to make sure they're loved and that they can grow and we need to it would be helpful if we could present them a world that 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 makes sense if we could present them a world where you could follow causes and effects in a way that was logical and made sense um and like yeah and like when people are and the other and the other side of the the, the other thing that, that yeah how how basically the, 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 like the world's kind of in a difficult spot right now which we all notice like i'm i'm very afraid of climate change and and uh, global politics seem really fraught and scary at the moment people are getting angry at each other all the time and there's a lot of shouting and a lot of protesting and a lot of people are turning to I don't know, confidence men and just people acting, trying to, yeah, I, I guess like the populism is, is scary and, and, and that people are valoring bullies and we have our, a lot of the you know, um, leaders that behave like bullies are becoming very popular and it's kind of scary. Um, uh, and people people are are losing trust in each other like people have a hard time trusting the government they have a hard time trusting the journalists they have a hard time trusting their educators they have a hard time trusting people of different political persuasions and and But like fundamentally, we're all faced with the same problem. Um, those like many people don't acknowledge its existence yet. Uh, I think the evidence for climate change on a catastrophic scale is uh, overwhelming and concerning to a lot of people. And yeah, you know, the more educated people are on this matter, it seems uh, often the more concerned they are. And so in, in, in a world where we're, where we're facing this increasing volatile situation where like it scares me. Okay, I guess, I, yeah, let's talk about the problem. What are the world's problems? What are the world's problems that I'm talking about? What are... Well, well, for one thing, I mean, like, we live in a finite world. There's only so many resources to go around. And, yeah, they're not very justly allocated at the moment. The way that resources are currently allocated is, yeah, and I guess I haven't acknowledged my privilege and stuff like that yet, and I probably should, and I'm sorry I haven't done that yet, because uh, it is kind of important. Like, I am... Um, and I, 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 you know, yes. Yeah, as, as Uncle Ben says in Spider Man, with great power comes great responsibility. And I, I don't think I have great power, but I have, I have a pretty powerful computer, and I know how to use it. So, and I've got some ideas, and 
that I think should be shared. So I'm going to try to share them. And so, but yeah, but basically the fact that I have this ability to communicate and that I have this community is, is just like a huge privilege. And I, I must be at least in the top, I don't know, 10%, maybe more, maybe 1% in terms of like technological capability. So, and even though I'm surrounded by people that just blow me away and uh, can't live up to, but, um, but yeah, I'm trying to, Yeah, it's 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 in it, and I, I I I think like ideally that like everyone in the world had access to the same opportunities that I had, and even better because you know always aim for progress, always aim for more, and yeah. So what are the world's problems? We live in a finite world, and. Um, and our, our population, our impact, like basically like that, exponential growth of, of human civilization. is coming against a hard limit. The way the world's resources are allocated are a result of... So it's hard to... S articulate this part because I know I'm just gonna I don't want to piss off conservative people and I don't want to piss off socially justice advocates because I, I really think it's important for these two people to work together and and I think it's not controversial to say that like I, 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 I'm a Canadian I live in Canada and I have you know, access to medical care, um, and there's um, pretty reasonable employment opportunities for someone with my capabilities out there, and yeah, and and I was blessed to live in a community and with a family that was able to support my education and give me a good life and I know that I'm actually that that that's actually an uncommon experience on on a global scale and uh, yeah so I, I you know there's there's people that argue that it, it, like things are getting better than than ever before and that that uh, the, the poverty rate is is decreasing and and things like this but i I just, I just think we could do we could be doing so much better and we have to do better and we have to do better quickly um so yeah the way the world is there's earth of of basically just uh i don't know how to say this but just uh, historical Well, I mean, there's both, there's two things here. Like, we have, there's, uh, yeah, yes, we, we, we have scientific and technological process or progress that have been going on simultaneously with this geopolitical mess of violence and, yeah, but that's, like, too complicated to get into, so we just... Well, well I'll, I'll just say historical injustice and in... 
I don't, I don't think that's that's too controversial. I think if you're, even if you're conservative, you have to acknowledge that that's the case. And uh, yeah, but I, I don't want to try to get too into that argument. I just want to say that basically, when when I want to solve the world, I, I I don't just want to like suck the carbon out of the atmosphere so that we don't have to worry about global warming anymore or something like that. I I I'd like everyone in the world to be able to live like how can um yeah how can we organize civilization such that everyone has access to I mean everyone like yeah uh, everyone accesses to you know uh, basically it's the best we have food shelter community Um, and education, information. That meets their basic needs and allows them to uh, fair shelter community education that meets their basic needs and allows them to contribute or if they want. Them to and care for their loved ones and resources. Contribute to their communities, care for their loved ones. And help collaborate in in social Yeah, so like basically the world's in rough shape. We've got a lot of problems and we need all hands on deck. Uh, the more people we can have helping us solve these problems, the better. The, the better, the more efficiently we're able to collaborate with each other, the better. Um, and for this reason, I think it would be, I would like, I guess I'm a little naive in this approach, but yeah, so, and like, I think if we could, you know, better model all the resources we have, we could c come up with better ways to more justly allocate the resources that we have. And it would be easier to make the arguments for more just allocations of resources. And, 
Yeah, I don't want to get into geopolitics yet, but it gets complicated because, you know, um, yeah, but, but I guess like the idea, like if, if, if you, if you could have say in the developed world, if, and, 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 and in our privileged societies and our, where we, we have the freedoms to experiment and create new institutions if we could develop communities that could live more autonomously um that might help people in countries in places on the earth where there's more oppression and more violence of disconnecting and living apart from um, the systems that reinforce that violence and yeah so the, but that's that's pretty pie in the sky I guess but yeah one thing at a time so one thing that I think that's like, like a pretty reasonable idea is um, universal basic income. Now, I think it's it, it like by itself, perhaps it, it's immediately feels naive to all people of various political persuasions. But I think um, yeah, so universal basic income is an idea that basically we just give everyone what they need the basic, like, and, and this is, I mean there's so many complications and people will talk about inflation and so many complicated arguments, but uh, so I'm not the best. Like I guess what was what's the guy, guy standing? He, I think he's a good guy to to look up to talk about UBI. Um, and there's so many uh, great advocates for this, but yeah, the, the idea is that, like if, if 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 the government just paid everyone a basic salary that they could just survive, even like basically without work. Uh, th then um. It would help in a lot of ways in terms of basically i think there's a lot of inefficiencies in the way our economy is currently organized and when when you force people to work and when you force people to work for basically giant corporate monopolies and stuff like that you're basically limiting the freedom that each individual has and how they choose to spend their time and what problems they choose to solve and I, I think in a society that had a universal basic income, people and, and in a society that had really good models of how society was functioning and how its ecology was functioning, people can make better choices of how they spent their time and better choices about what problems they choose to solve. And so I, th I think a universal basic income could go a long way in terms of eliminating jobs that are pointless and creating jobs that have real value. And it will allow people to basically maximize their opportunity because I mean, even like libertarians are always arguing for equality of opportunity. So I think there's a strong libertarian argument to be made for universal basic income in that sense, such that, uh, yeah. And, um, but I think, yeah. And it gets complicated. Like, yeah. But, uh, and in terms of, like how, how how do we do like i still I, I i like some people who like who want to advocate for your ubi want to do it by taking money away for from healthcare and other uh public services but i i don't think that's necessary either i think basically like, as i talked about earlier like the public services could be better organized into I, 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 I into i, I think a more a, a better transparent infra uh 
if, if we basically had functional computable models of our institutions, like of our hospitals and our educational institutions and other super complicated institutions, uh, we could manage them better and we could have people participating in managing them better. And like the more open it is, the more locally adaptable things are. And a lot of the time our institutions are mandated by like a, a, mon a monopolistic standard that has to do the same thing everywhere or a government standard that demands the same thing everywhere. But I think, um, with a more open, transparent infrastructure, we could see more like experimentation going on and we could see more, um, local adaptations to improve, uh, the institution that wasn't as beholden to, uh, so, I mean, we, we still got to have standards of course, but we shouldn't let the standards hold us back from giving the people the best possible services. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, so yeah, but I think uh, yeah, a combination of universal basic income, which would allow people to, uh, choose the work that they're best suited for, hopefully, ideally. And, uh, and, and like, so basically, so it, it, yeah, so you have the universal basic income interfacing with this open ecology of, or, uh, what, what do I want to call them? Um, I, I don't think I've come up with the word for this yet. So, so, Um, open Open model institutions. May I just call them that? OMIs, maybe. <laughs> institutions. But it's also. And in the data, open model, and not necessarily all the data is going to be open, but open model. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to call them open model institutions. So I think like universal basic income in combination with open model institutions. In combination with democratic procedures is basically uh, a rough concept. Okay, rough concept. society yeah I've never tried to actually write down a definition I always just like think about them these ideas but never tried to write them down before so this is all new to me or uh, just thinking about it this deeply for the first time I guess or or trying to actually come up with words that I can be happy with uh, that I feel communicate what I'm trying to say effectively is, is really difficult. So I'll just say a rough concept of a democratic protocracy is basically uh, 
It's a democratic society. I have a, that's not, it's a, it's a, it's, I don't want to, that's too tautologistic. <laughs> that's a word. Uh, so a society of individuals that, uh, what is a demic pro? individuals, societies that, in which each individual is cared for such that they can they can like I, I mean I'm just kind of playing on I know there's a quote in I think it's in the Communist Manifesto from each to each according to their needs, from each according to their capabilities. Uh, I guess I'm c kind of trying to get at something like that, and uh, but worded in a different, like when, because like I mean, you could take it in extreme ways. It's like 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 it's in a non-totalitarian way. Like I I don't want to, you know who who gets to decide what a person's uh, needs are and and what a person's capabilities are and. And I think in a democratic society, an individual themselves gets to decide what their needs are and what their capabilities are. And of course, the rest the role of everyone else in society in terms of interfacing with this individual is to help them um, best understand their own needs and their own capabilities in a way. So, okay, so just, just they can. Yeah, so Yeah. Uh yeah, so here I guess we'll go, let's go back to the world's problems a little bit. How can people can't agree on how best to organize ourselves? People have difficulty trusting so how can how can how can we get people to How can we organize? How, is there is there a way we can organize ourselves that that people might agree to? And how can we build trust? All right, in a society in which. What is a democratic proteroxy? Yeah. Just gonna push, gotta push it like this writer's blocker. Doesn't matter, you don't have to write well, you just have to write and Maybe write it well later. Who cares? Just just write. All right. So so rough concept. So yeah. All right, I guess I should just plainly say many people 
many people are impoverished. And living with Uh, I, I'm just, it's, I don't know, I'm trying to be too articulate. I just got to be just, yeah. Many people are impoverished. Wars. Wars suck. Violence in general. Organized violence. Let's just call it organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then people, like, you know. Um, wars, violence, um, lack of freedom. Yeah. So <laughs> Okay. Rough concept which aims society James. Maybe it's, yeah, sometimes I think of Pope calling this a holistic democratic protocracy um, in terms of okay aims to Um, create the clearest uh, yeah, what's the rough what's the best way to say this this is so hard this is all going to be out of YouTube um, so 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 Okay, rough concept. I want to, I think it would be a good idea to Just write badly, write badly. Rough concept. Um, rough concept of society. In which um, rough concept, yeah. Uh, All, or at least um, institutions are organized into Yeah. 
basically. Basically, I want to like maximize the, the well-being of every human, and I want to maximize our ability to take care of our environments. And I think the best way to do this is if our institutions were, if we, okay, so we, yeah, so rough concept, we have open, I'll call this OMI. Uh, society built on uh, open model institutions in which the basic needs of everyone in the society are met in the this is kind of the goal of a, of a democratic rough concept I'll just say goal society built on open model institutions in which the basic needs of everyone in the society are met in the sur surrounding ecology is well cared for So um, UBI one strategy for making sure we're helping everyone to live well and participate. And... Okay, so... Open... I still spell it though. Model institutions. Um, should be democratic in that. Um, yes. Here's an idea I forgot. Uh, hopefully the, yeah, this is this one I take from the social justice community and that's, um, intersectionality. Sorry for being so late to use that word, but um, so should be this. So yeah. So how how do we organize democracy? So it should be democratic in that um, there should be methods such as voting, and like this is complicated and. Which is voting and discussion platforms. Uh, 
for all stakeholders. I don't know if this is the right word but in the institution to periodically update the model. And why I brought up intersectionality. I even spell that. I'm going to look that up. Got it right. Oh, maybe I didn't. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, I like the idea of... Okay, so when I go back to the... the I was talking earlier about the Internet Engineering Task Force and how they were saying they reject kinks in voting and they believe in rough consensus and running code. Um, I think like like for various institutions can be more um, loose with their uh, democratic procedures than others, but I think any um, it's imp it's important that um, well I'm going to talk about this. So what I want to finally end with what what this whole thing has been building up to is is that on this stream I want to build a platform. I want to write some source code. I want to write some software. It's basically. Uh, a conflict resolution platform and this conflict resolution platform i think is just like a general purpose tool that's used for uh, i want it to be used for people that have like different ideologies or backgrounds to discuss difficult topic and try to like if not come to an agreement or resolve the conflict at least to come to better understandings of their uh of the the people that they disagree with on the and and of the of basically the, the different groups understandings of the problems so and 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 of course yeah um, uh so so like these days like there's there, there's there's it seems like the only permission that you really need to do anything is to have enough money and enough lawyers to justify what you want to spend your money on and you can basically get anything done especially in tech which is kind of concerning but uh but yeah i'd rather see um like institutions that were built on like like the rough consensus of all the various of any interest group that that has any claim whatsoever to be affected by uh the existence of the institution so um and 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 i think like yeah so inter yeah so intersectionality can be used An intersection uh um groups organically organized around inter various I don't know intersectional categories so so basically intersect oh. sectional democracy that's basically every distinct
I don't know if people have used intersectional democracy words together in a sentence before. They probably have, and they probably mean something totally different than what I'm about to say it means. So, yeah, all, all these ideas are just out of just... I, I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. I, I am not a sociologist or anything, so I'm really sorry if I'm using these words a little bit carelessly. I'm just trying to express myself as clearly as I can, <laughs> and which is, you know, unfortunately a little difficult for me, but I'm doing my best. So, um, uh, so it, when I think about intersectional democracy, what I mean is that every, I th and, okay, one thing when, I guess it's here I have maybe a controversial thing to say about intersectionality is that I think that intersectionality that doesn't include individuals isn't intersectional enough. But that means I think all groups matter and all individuals matter and and every basically when 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 it comes to making decisions Every identifiable group, or perhaps even individuals that are affected by the existence of the institution um, should get a say. Should be represented in deliberations and in some cases it may be prudent that certain groups have veto powers so And I'm being super vague here, I'm sorry. But uh, I'll try to get more specific in the future. But I just, basically the idea of intersectional democracy is such that it is, to, it is to create some basically organic checks and balances on decision making. And that's that's the idea, um, and like I think in like in the future, like like actually the the tool that I want to develop, I'm going to try to develop basically a, a somewhat of an inter intersectional um, yeah, basically an intersectional conflict resolution platform is basically what I what I'm hoping to build, and and and, and the idea is that like. Um, uh, people can organize themselves into whatever groups they want and whatever subgroups they want and whatever groups of groups they want and each of those can have a unique say on on whatever situation and um, so basically I, I yeah I'd, I'd like to build uh, some tools that would help this and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only person who's thinking along these lines I'm sure there's some work out there and if I went to look for it I'd probably find a lot so uh, so but yeah this is this is a rough idea of uh, a democratic protocracy like imagine a society that was fully modelable fully understandable fully like uh, a anybody who s saw a problem with the world could go look up how exactly how it works and propose a change, 
bring their change to the wider community and all the groups that are involved, propose the change to them and see who likes it, see who doesn't. And then on a periodic basis, we could update the, the model that our institutions run on. And ideally, like if we have models, institutions that are successful, they can be replicated in other communities and the growth in one community can help growth in another community. Um, and I think some, yeah, I also wanted to talk about some, perhaps, uh, some economic, um, effects, <laughs> uh, Uh, so, okay, so, okay, so, like, ec economic distribution of value beyond basic income. So, it's like, for for a lot of people out, 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 out there in the world, um, the idea of being, like, compensated for good work is, is really important to them, and... And for a lot of people, they feel like if they work harder than somebody else, that they should be rewarded more. And that's, that's fair enough. Um, so provided that like, I think as long as everyone's well taken care of for it's, 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 it's fair that people who work harder could be rewarded more. And, and in, I think in a hold stick democratic protocracy that, that, uh, um, whereas, you might not necessarily get the uh, billionaires of of uh, corporate monopolies. Um, I think it's still possible for certain people to do well, and it's uh, yeah. So, like, uh, how do we like incentivizing? It, it's possible to like incentivize, uh, yeah, yeah, incentivizing. It's like so now I'm trying to speak a little bit to the you know capitalistic conservative crowd um how how do we incentivize man I'm an awful speller I'm really sorry internet this is what happens when an idiot tries to save the world just so you know. Yeah, so we need to whatever innovation. Incentivizing innovation. Is that two L's, two N's? Yeah. Um so I think one way to do this, which I think would be ethical and that uh, hopefully a capitalist could be, or a, you know, or a traditionalist, or I don't know, whatever minded person could agree with, and that uh, hopefully a, a diehard Marxist would not argue with, um, uh, such that, okay, so. Yeah, so instead of. Basically, so this is getting back to my, like, basically, intellectual property laws as they are, aren't entirely compatible with this vision of a democratic protocracy. Um, uh, yeah, so, so instead of, so, 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 so yeah, let's just say, instead of, um, using patents for example giving people monopolies to incentivize the creation of an innovation i think it'd be would be better off if we say we gave them instead of uh, an exclusive patent right we just simply gave them a limited term of a uh, royalty right so anyone can do what they want but um with their invention but if somebody else is making a profit off of their invention then by law they should have to share uh percentage of their profits or even 
income because I know how yeah people can fudge their perhaps that should even yeah who know anyway they should share a percentage of 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 their income with the for a limited time with the innovator so for example so in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a open or in a, in a democratic protocratic society where we have open model institutions if someone comes up with uh, an improvement for a uh, institution that, say, lowered the ecological footprint of, or increased the ecological surplus of the community, um, then for a limited time that they could uh, be rewarded for that increase in surplus. And then perhaps even if that... Uh, innovation is replicated in other open model institutions and in other communities the original inventor who created the original innovation can have a royalty from the in, that innovation being applied there too and hopefully that this would incentivize people to constantly be improving uh these open model institutions so yeah so it's like royalty so basically replacing um, replacing patent rights with more basic royalty. And like, no one's ever going to agree with this, but I mean, it's pie in the sky. This is, and the, and I'm not talking about, you know, revolution. I don't say like smash the, a current economy and destroy all the current businesses and just change all the laws tomorrow. Uh, I'm not saying that at all. I, th I think uh, it's possible to build um, open model institutions within society as it is now. And I, I, I would much rather we, it was peacefully grown and, or just organically replaced uh, the old fashioned monopolistic institutions organically as I, I would rather I, I want to see open model institutions out compete monopolistic institutions uh yeah yeah so this is the goal I want I'll put this up here on the goals um um so this is how do we get there yeah I guess yeah. So like, how do how do we get there? <laughs> I, I want to make it clear. I'm I'm not calling for revolution. I'm not calling. I'm totally not calling for revolution. I almost wanted to stay that up up front. Holy crap! Yeah, I should. Uh, just all ideas. Non violence. I am like. I don't like. I don't like shame. I don't like intellectual property laws. Don't like violence. And. And I think it's complete. I, I I'd like to think that it's maybe it's just a full hearted thing to think, but I, I think it's it's completely unnecessary and uh I'd like to see I believe that open model institutions if well built good out compete So that's kind of the dream. I'm, I know that's another extraordinary claim that probably very few people find convincing, especially considering how scattering my arguments have been so far. But uh, but that's that's the dream. So I'm just sharing my dreams today. <laughs> Not so much coherent argument, I guess. But um, but yeah. So uh, so I'd like so. I'd like to create an open model institution that can now compete. So like the idea of the, the data bank earlier, like I'd, I'd like to think that they, these kind of 
data banks could perhaps one day, like these federated services could have perhaps one day replace, replace Facebook, replace Twitter, replace everything. Sorry. I know this is on Twitch, but perhaps even warm day replace. So here, here's another thing like, yeah. So the idea is like, I think like, yeah. I believe that the goal of any institution or any um any technological service company should be to automate itself out of existence. And now that'll probably make a lot of shareholders unhappy. If all of a sudden say, I don't know, Facebook decided, yeah, we're just gonna like, uh, convert to a democracy tomorrow and, uh, automate all of our institutions and yeah but yeah so like the, the the way it is now it's it's like we're giving one company like basically infinite control over certain services like monopolistic control over certain services and I, I just don't feel it needs to be that way. And I don't think long term that's like a sustainable solution. Like, do we really want, like, do we, do we want a hundred years of, do we want a thousand years of Facebook and McDonald's? And like, I, is, 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 is that where we want to see humanity from now until the end of time? Or, or, or would we like to move somewhere is better eventually? Like, I, like, yeah, as I've said, I'm not calling for revolution, but, I'd like to see a federated service version of, of of Facebook where people have control over their own data and control of the algorithms that decide uh, what's on their feed and whatnot. And, and I'd like to, s to live in a world where if somebody wanted to open a restaurant, they didn't the first choice wasn't might not be uh or where where somebody who uh, yeah uh, i think like an open model institute could like in terms of a business and like in a, in a business sex could uh replace what monopolistic franchises do at the moment and yeah because what what what, the, what monopolies tend to bring is is consistency, and and that's valuable. But I think we can achieve the same consistency with open model institutions as we have with our monopolies without being as of uh, without being basically at the mercy of these monopolies, we can, we we can, we, we, we can still have our same, um, you know, health and safety standards, for example. But a lot of the, the goal of, of, of an open model institution is, is, is basically to make it easier for individuals to participate in starting a business, to go to work for themselves, to become a tradesperson, and I've, I've just got so many things to say about how it can help in a lot of different areas, but I, I I'm kind of just kind of want to race through an overview and, and I want to start talking about my, the platform that I want to build soon for conflict resolution uh, before I wrap things up, I'm starting to get really tired. So, uh, so I think I'm going to pivot to that, but yeah, I just want to, Yeah, just like give a rough idea, a rough introduction of, you know, democratic protocracy and 
a few ideas. Uh, yeah. I guess one idea I did want to talk about would be, um, or, or another example, just, just like an example. Um, I'm not sure how this fits, but like, okay, like here, here, here's just, I'm just going to talk like openly about how I think like say artists or musicians could be better compensated uh, and have more power over their distribution and how they make money and stuff like that than they do right now currently like where they have to sign a record label and sign all their intellectual property away to a corporate corporate and i mean they, they, they got good reason for this a lot of people do i mean because it's it's a complicated industry there's a lot of production that goes and a lot of it, uh, this industry employs a lot of people and a lot of awesome people and it's a amazing industry but uh i like like the only i guess jobs that i think an open model institution would threaten would be basically corporate execs and lawyers and the whole administration i basically want to i think open models institutions can automate uh, the administration of uh, the services that people in the in an economy need so yeah so as, as an example like so whereas the current model for musicians is to like basically you get intellectual property rights uh, for your creations and you sign them over to a company who helps you manage your productions and facilitations of all the manage all the things that you don't want to manage while you're just writing music and going about your career as a musician um but just as a proposal like just as a rough idea, like this is not fully thought out, but like what if instead uh, of royalty or of intellectual property rights, we had just simple attribution rights such that like you create a song, you share it. And I know some, like a lot of musicians will be angry at this. I like, they're probably, we need some kind of representation rights too because people i know people get very upset when people say use their art to promote concepts that they disagree with and i think that's very valid and people should be able to have some kind of veto power over allowing people to use their art to promote ideas that they don't agree with i think that's important um but in terms of just um getting mo money to artists what 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 what, they, what I think would be really helpful so it would be an information infrastructure such that when you create a f piece of music and you put it out there in the world say that that you 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 sign it such that people know that it came from you and in 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 your media you have like a little link of basically where that came from and where where that can be compensated so and, and so that every so somebody who's using say uh, uh an audio a, list, a music listening software like say it doesn't matter like vlc or spotify or whatever somebody's listening to your your, your song and they're participating in the the protocol or the the open, the open music protocol or whatever the I want to we call it, uh, then they they can choose to share that they're listening to that song, and and that way the artists can know can get statistics on how and their song is being listened to, and 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 because all the media is signed then. All the the listener will always be able to uh, have a link directly to you know who the original artist is and how to compensate the original artist. And so, so he, like he, like here's an example where 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 gets dicey. Like right now, there's a, there's a problem on YouTube and and, and Twitch and, and streaming services and video services where people, you know, people are just people. People love music and they like to listen to music while they talk. And they like to listen to music while they're playing games and they're or they're telling stories, and uh, 
but when there's but the their video might get demonetized because they didn't get permission from the artist or their stream will be muted because the there's we got robots out there right now that are that scan everything we upload to look for copyrighted material and and remove it but I think it would be nice if there was a system such that, okay, for example, like imagine if a, a streamer was playing music and, and that streamer was, uh, had a thousand viewers and they play that song and all of a sudden a thousand person people are, are made aware of that song. And that's, that's kind of promotion of that song. So if, if, if the stream, if the infrastructure was set up properly, like some people, like actually list the songs that they're listening to on the stream and sometimes like people post in chat hey what song is this and they get the song but it would be nice if it was all automated such that like the original artist was aware hey uh this streamer was playing your song that gave you a thousand exposures and then later on down the line say any of those people those thousand people that heard that song through that stream for the first time say they go out and they 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 bought an album or they, they bought a, some merch or they went to a show, they would, then the original artist would know that it was because of this streamer that the, they got promotion. So then the streamer could get paid from, by getting say some percentage of the, like, like, like we try to do all this already with like promotion codes and stuff like this, but all, all this stuff could be completely automated, embedded into the media itself and put in our information infrastructure and we don't really and if we had good protocols if we had like rough consensus and running code we wouldn't need the laws we wouldn't need the the lawyers so much and we wouldn't need the uh, corporate administrators and ceos so much it would all like ideally just work and so when i'm talking about a democratic photography i think like that, that, that's, that's kind of what i'm trying to get at that's like one example i don't know if that's clear but Anyway, that's 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 an example. So, okay, now that I've gotten on all this backstory, uh, and I didn't talk nearly as much as I wanted about anything that I wanted to talk about, I want to close the stream out by talking about the platform I want to build. What do I want to build first? What to build first? And this is like this is when I ask myself, what is the single most to me anyway sorry this is important uh problem to solve is there a single most important problem to solve i think where what problem Like what problem could we solve that would have, if we were to say that there's an infinite amount of problems out there, but is there, is there a problem such that if we solved it would have the most significant contribution to mankind? Uh, or I shouldn't use that word, I guess, uh, to, to humanity. Um, like, well, Like, like for, for me, I, I think like the, the, the most fundamental problem that we're all facing is that what problems are in the most need of being solved. Like uh, there's like effective, I might be aware there's like an effective altruist community, um, and that uh, the idea is like like to try to like pick charities which would have like the most impact, and like uh, and there's like a lot of interesting discussion that goes on in this community. I recommend checking it out. Uh, they promote like like I think like one of the things they promote is is like uh, malaria nets because apparently if you invest if you if you if you're if you're a philanthropist and you buy and distribute malaria nets 
you're likely to save more lives than doing anything else. I think I, I can't remember exactly. I think I heard that in a podcast once. Um, and so in their community, this is the problem of trying to grasp like what, 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 what can we do where we can have the most impact? And for me, I feel like the thing that we need to do the most, the thing, the thing that the, the problem that if we could solve it would have the most impact is how can we work together? And that, this involves, you know, we want everyone to work together. This is, I, I want everyone to be maximally capable of working together. And how, how can, how can we resolve conflicts that prevent us from working together? Um, so I feel I feel the most important thing to work on is platforms for collaboration. discussion and conflict resolution. So So basically I want to make so I want, I want to attempt to make a conflict collaborative conflict resolution platform. build and when I build this I want it to be yeah like like has to be it has to be has to be free software I want it to be intersectional when it has to be it has to resist being gained by uh, and I think the intersectionality will really help um, will help the platform resist being gamed it's it's part of my strategy for making a, a conflict resolution platform that can resist being gamed by um, powerful interest groups and automated tax.
every group and every individual. Ideally, this will be a federated service, but to start off, I'm, I'm just going to build a prototype using like Python and my basic skills. Um, all right, so. So I guess there's a lot of overlap with what I want to accomplish and what the you know open science community is already doing. But I think what what I'm trying to do that's a little bit different is is is, is I, I'm trying to make a general engagement tool. But basically what I want to do is I want to make I want to build on the achievements. Um how should I put this? Basically, I'm, yeah. So, I guess the, cl like the closest thing that's out there to what I want to build that you that I can compare this to uh, would be Wikipedia, and that like w Wikipedia has a very elaborate conflict resolution process already but I think the process is, is is largely cultural and social well they have a lot of norms and they have a lot of guides and and to be honest I I'm not actually well versed on how they do a lot of it I, I looked into it a few times and it's it always amazes me but like at Wikipedia of course like as you sorry not of course but as, as you might know um it's a collaborative website where anyone can edit an article and they try to, in each article, they try to come to a, a neutral point of view and where and their, their basic rules are it's like every fact in the article needs to be sourced and attempts are made such that the articles don't push any particular agenda. Now, of course, this is really hard to do. And I think like, Wikipedia is amazing and I think like for 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 like the majority of of concepts and the majority of information out there is actually non-controversial and for non-controversial information Wikipedia is amazing and it's almost solved the problem already unfortunately I think for for controversial information or controversial ideas Wikipedia becomes a little bit uh less reliable or less satisfying for people who have ideas that perhaps deviate from what the wikipedia community considers that to be a neutral point of view so i essentially i i'd like to create something like wikipedia except imagine okay Rough idea. Or, uh, CCR, I'll just call it CCRP for now. Idea for CCRP. So. Basically, imagine except this is this is not the whole thing. This is just this is just getting started. All right. So Wikipedia except um, instead of striving for a neutral point view CCRP strive 
to represent every point of view as clearly as possible. So imagine you go to an article on climate change and at the top of the page you see, I don't know, say there's a group of uh, like concerned scientists and organizations that's represented by whole bunches of people. Like it could be groups of groups of groups uh, or, or it could be, or it could just maybe be single, single university. And they say, okay, this is, this is, uh, I guess I'd have to be more specific, but uh so like each, each, I'll, I'll allow each group, I mean, I'll, I mean, the platform would allow each group to create their own narrative about, about every issue. And, and then someone who visits the, the, the topic on the, on the platform would be able to see every different version and they would see, they can sort by popularity, sort by controversial. And it should also be able to sort by, um, so so it's every rep view is represented. You could say, like, okay, which view is the most reputable? But you could also like, I want, uh, yeah. So every point of view needs to be represented as clearly as possible, and. So, so, um, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, I guess I want to build a new taxonomy. We're representing arguments and narratives. Well, not necessarily new taxonomy, but just like a, a functional taxonomy that, 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 that groups can use to, so ideally, different Yeah, so, yeah, uh, the, 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 the taxonomy and the metadata are, are designed, were ideally allowed to, or designed, or ideally designed to uh, allow, to, to make it easy for human, to, for users to compare and contrast competing narratives and competing claims, and, um, there needs so so each group will be allowed so there should be there okay, okay guess yeah, uh, yeah. I, I want I want to build a, a groups should have tools to apply standards of rigor to claims and facts in narratives.
So I guess like when I talk about groups, like uh, uh, one thing uh, you know, is might be helpful to imagine is, is is Reddit. For example, on Reddit, there are there's a subreddit for almost anything, but all all the subreddits are kind of like isolated and separate. And sometimes, like when a, when a big news story comes out, uh, it'll get posted to a lot of different subreddits, and you can click uh, and, and see related, usually at the top, and or other discussions. I can't remember what they call it, and you can see all the different communities reacting to the news story. And basically, I'd like this to facilitate that in a more um, collaborative way. Like, like right now, all all, all these different. If you, typically, when you t see the different groups talking about a, a common news story, each group is is largely insular and has its own perspective and its own narrative on the issue. And there's very little discussion between the different subreddits. And there are some often subreddits made to as specifically designed. Like, there's a lot of interesting work going on 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 reddit in terms of conflict resolution i know there's a change my view subreddit that's that's, that's interesting and uh it's kind of uh yes yeah, similar conceptually a little bit to what i want to do but yeah i want to i want to make it easier and more possible for people with different persuasions to um validate and test each other's claims and yeah i want each like for example i want i want uh, a place where news stories like i, I guess i guess a motivation a, a lot of the motivation for this is is, is the fact that I, i'm i'm basically really dissatisfied with the evolution with the current state of online discussion platforms and commenting systems. I'm really trying to build a better discussion system and yeah so and actually like my next stream i'm actually going to try to start building this so uh so all of the stuff that's kind of like vague uh will eventually become uh, hammered down in terms of an actual source code repository that you can check out in the future hopefully if i'm able to keep keep this up um yeah so so i'm just like really dissatisfied with like basically like like reddit's been around since 2006 and though like communities themselves have done uh interesting things on subreddits and in different communities in terms of uh outreach and better understanding and and cr basically creating informative spaces for people to learn about things uh yeah i'm just i i i think it's 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 been a while uh i i'd really like to see more innovation in that space i'd i'd like to see more people trying and of course it's really hard to do because even if you build a platform how can you get anyone to join it like that that's that's a huge problem and i'm probably going to have that problem probably no one's ever going to join this thing but i'm just i still think that it's it's just an important uh it's an it's an area that could use a work and i think and i think if more work was put into this it would i, I don't know I, for for me i see this as a tool to help journalists be better journalists i see it as a tool to help political parties become political political parties i see this as a tool for all our institutions to become better institutions i um but yeah so the idea is so uh, i guess like something happens and you want to you you want you want you want you want to and and it's a, con, a something controversial happens or is there something like uh 
and if you want to verify it and so it, it would be cool like in, in some magic world where this the conflict resolution platform exists and people are actually using it uh, you go to the site you check out the issue and then you see all the different groups okay what what do conservatives think about this what do, what do liberals think about this what do libertarians think what do socialists think what do marxists think what is what is yeah what, what do all the different groups think what do yeah what what do all the historically marginalized and unrepresented groups think uh and and groups typically have narratives and and context and when a story comes out i, I think it's really important that like i'd like this platform to be able to f for each group to fit that news story into their narrative context and i think it's important for a user to like who's or somebody who's coming at it who's who, who, who's unaware of the different groups narratives and representations of the arguments uh to actually be able to go and see what the different groups narratives are and like the the, the idea is that every, every group is able to articulate their their perspective is as as clearly as possible and they're able to re to communicate what facts that support their narratives and their claims and what historical uh understandings and and experiences shaped the, those narratives and um so at the very least i hope that it helps people empathize better with people who are coming from different places and ultimately uh, like i think there should be a system where where like if if, if a conflict resolution system such that when there when there is a strong conflict and when there is a complete competing narratives that 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 these two say say just like there could be two there could be and like any number of groups uh with different perspectives that have a conflict on an issue and but what what what, what i want my platform to be able to do is is allow different groups to uh say choose standards of rigor choose standards of facts to um basically really 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 specify as like clearly as possible their points of agreement and disagreement uh the facts that they agree with the facts that they don't agree with the 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 factors that they think support their argument the factors that don't that the models the scientific models that are out there that support their arguments on either side and stuff and 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 i think like if different groups can w when a conflict arises if they can uh agree on on basically standards of verification of factual verification and standards of and and like every group gets to define its own standards and its own uh then like ideally like like the groups maybe not all the time but eventually slowly uh groups can come to a better understanding and be better able to compromise and be a better able to uh if not resolve a conflict at least at least compromise on issues so i mean that's a that's a dream that's a pie in the sky hope and that's that's what i'm going to be working on in the future and um after this i'm going to turn my chat on my chat's been off and I'm going to start coding and write more ideas as I can. But I've, I've been talking for, I guess, three or four hours. I'm not really sure. And I'm starting to get tired. So I think this is as messy and awful and incoherent as this might be. It's, it's, it's getting me out there. I, I hope to improve my arguments going forward. I hope to be able to be more coherent. And uh, as I hope as I develop this platform, I'm able to um better articulate my rationale for its existence a little better um and yeah yeah one thing i wanted to mention i hope to publish all my media under creative commons license and all my code under a free s software license and uh yeah uh so i hope you find something interesting here and uh yeah until the next stream uh keep dreaming